This isn't coffee. It's actually um, chamomile, chamomile, camo. It's tea with some ginger in it, honey, a little bit of a little bit of lemon. The works. Everyone I know, everyone I know is sick around me. So I'm here snuggled up in what my wife calls a towel. She says this sweater looks like a towel, but I, mean, I guess it kind of does. Super warm though. There's a good thumbnail. <laughs> okay, okay, honestly. But yeah, everyone around me is sick, so I'm trying to do all the preventative things uh, to make sure that I don't get sick because I've got a lot to do coming up in the next few weeks. One of those includes going to NAB, which is in Vegas at the end of this week with Maddie, so I'm super excited for that. Got a plan, got to get some videos out before then, and then some super exciting news, super exciting news when we get back from NAB and that whole thing begins to unfold. So, I also fully understand it's probably very hard to take me seriously right now with this hood and this teddy bear-like sweater, towel, whatever you'd like to call it. So let's go ahead and uh, let's roll the intro. <laughs> okay. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here. Welcome back to another tutorial, kind of little tech talk, if you will, photo talk. We're talking about my favorite, there's a lot of talks right there in the first little, uh, first like 30 seconds there. We are discussing uh, my favorite lens. I think this is like taken over the 24 mil, which was my favorite. I've used it for like a hundred years, it feels like, but this new 85 mil 1.4 image stabilized L version lens is probably my all time favorite lens and it is what I have been using for all of my B-roll. It's just been crushing it since October, I would say. It is essentially my new B-roll go-to. I don't even bring this 7200 around anymore. Legitimately only bring this and like my 16 to 35. It is a beast. I'm gonna tell you why. We're gonna show you some examples and I wanna talk a little bit about why having a lens like this in your kit is a very good idea. And there's also three versions of this, so keep that in mind. But before we go any further into this video, that's, uh, that's much better. Uh, the I'm just not, I don't, I don't think I like it. I don't think I like that sweater. Uh, pretty much everyone that I know hates it. So yeah, let me know in the comments below. Get rid of the sweater, keep the sweater. Okay, back to the, uh, back to the 85. So one of the things that I love to do on this channel in general is shoot a lot of B-roll. Now, a lot of you guys know me for that reason. It's kind of synonymous with my channel. I add it a lot to the vlogs. I add it to tutorials. I, I kind of add it whenever I can. And a lot of people ask, how do you shoot that specific type of B-roll or how do you make it look the way you make it look? And a lot of that has to do with where you are, the gear that you're shooting with, the lens choice that you're using, the subject matter, the weather, all of that stuff obviously combines into making a good B-roll sequence. I did a video on. On it ages ago, ages ago. I'm probably due for an update on it, to be honest, but a lot of what that is, is a particular lens. Now, I used to shoot a lot on my 7200, but that lens is massive. For example, this lens is huge. When you put the lens hood on it, let me get this, like, it's bigger than like, Look at that, when you put the lens hood on it, this thing is massive. Now, the other thing is it's super heavy. That also takes up a lot of room in your camera bag. So when I'm traveling, when I'm on the go, and I'm on the move, getting on airplanes, getting off airplanes, or just running around my neighborhood, um, having this in the backpack at the very bottom just hurts my back, hurts my shoulders. It's just massive. So to be able to switch it out for something like this, which is three times lighter, three times smaller, almost does the same thing with a faster aperture. Um, I think there's two words for that. What is it again? Uh, yes, please. Also, my closet back there is kind of a mess because I'm in the middle of moving, but it's, uh, it's not my house, but anyway. So having something this small in your bag all the time really, really makes life easy, especially when you want to capture those B-roll segments. Not to mention the whole photography side of things. This isn't just for video, this is an incredible photography lens as well. Now Canon make three versions of the 85. They make the 1.2, which is a, a way heavier, bigger, slower version of this. They make a 1.4, not L version, which is significantly cheaper, which is still a great lens. It's kind of like uh, the upgrade that I would choose from the Nifty 50 if I was looking for something else a little bit further, a little bit more telephoto, I would probably choose the non-L version of the 85 for that kind of an upgrade. And then they just released this. Now, I got this way back in October and I meant to make a video about it, but I wanted to actually use it out in the field. I took it to Iceland, to Sweden, to Norway. It's kind of, it's been around. It's been all over the place, Las Vegas. And it has been absolutely incredible. Look at that big piece of glass. Like, doesn't that just look incredible? So because this lens is a 1.4, and for those of you that don't know what 1.4 means, that just means the aperture, the actual iris inside this lens that opens up to let light in, opens up to a 1.4. 
1.4 aperture, which is very, very wide. Tons of light comes in. So it's amazing in low light. It's also gonna give you those super crispy, deliciously melted butter pancake backgrounds, which everybody is after and they look so good in photos. Here's a couple examples of them. You can see how it really takes the person that you're shooting or the object and pops them off that photo, really melting that background away into nothing. And the same goes for B-roll. I really like it because it isolates the exact thing that I wanna shoot. Now where I really love this is when I'm shooting my B-roll and I'm able to target a subject, have that person or object be super crisp, but still blend in elements on the foreground that are really, really washed out. So what do I mean by that? Because it's kind of confusing if you don't see something visual to identify with. So this footage here of me making coffee on the beach, you can see all the bull rushes that are actually in the foreground of that image, but they don't actually show up crystal clear because it's an 85 mil. It can't focus that close. So it's focused on me, but all those bull rushes and long grass and that kind of thing still wisp back and forth in front of the lens, creating that really nice depth of field, both in the foreground and in the background, which is why I love a lens like this. Now I use that technique a lot when I'm shooting photos, when I'm shooting B-roll, I always place something almost kind of in front of the lens if I'm focused further away, which then blurs it in the front and the back and gives you a much more layered photo or clip that looks a lot better in the long run. Next up, the lens is finally image stabilized. So when you have a focal length like 85 millimeters, sometimes, be it that you know it or not, camera shake can be introduced and it can sneak up on you when you least expect it. So having image stabilization within this lens is, oh, Thank you. I mean, you can never go wrong with having image stabilization. It's just there to help you. And if you're shooting B-roll and you're shooting handheld and you don't have a gimbal, for example, that's where this is going to be super, super helpful. I feel like I can't continue this tutorial because I am super hungry. I'm sorry to just, I'm sorry to just like, I'm sorry to just abruptly stop like this, but I need, I need food. Hey, yeah, can I get an order for delivery? Yeah, just a medium pepperoni and cheese pan fried. Yeah, no, that's it. Just maybe some hot sauce, throw some garlic dip in there for good measure, maybe some barbecue sauce. Ooh, getting crazy. <laughs> yeah, front door's fine. 30 minutes, okay, thanks. Come back, boof. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I love pizza. Yeah, I love pizza more than this 85 for sure. Ugh. Ooh, I wasn't kidding. Like, we're gonna do like a mid tutorial break and just chow down on, on this. Oh. Mmm. Mmm. A little barbecue sauce. Mmm. Who is this for? Who's the market for this lens? If you were coming at me and saying, hey, Pete, like, I'm looking to upgrade my lens, like, what should I get next? I'm looking to expand my kit. You kind of got to look at the things you're shooting. If you're an event photographer, this lens is fantastic because it's an 85. It's fast enough that you can use it indoors all the time. It gives you that nice depth of field so you can really isolate your subjects. It's perfect for weddings, events, organizations, that kind of thing. This is a great lens. Now, when you think vlogging, it's actually not the best lens for vlogging. See, I just carry it around for B-roll sequences. Other than that, I pretty much don't use it. It comes out when I shoot B-roll, it goes back in the bag when I'm done. And also, I don't shoot all my B-roll on an 85. I still mix in a 16 to 35, or maybe a 50 mil, or depending what the aperture is. This is primarily used the most, but it's still not just the only lens I'm using. So for vlogs, and if this is all you're doing, might not be the absolute best unless that is the look you're going for. But then when you flip photography into the mix as well, that's when things get a little more worth it for you because I shoot a ton of portraits with this. Because of that isolated background, I really like that look. Now someone like Maddie, my buddy that also shoots here on YouTube, he does not like the look of compressed lens. He almost never shoots more than 35 mil. He's always preferring wide angle and 35, whereas I'm always trying to get him to shoot B-roll of me using this lens. So it really is a creative preference and it's up to you to figure out which one you like and what suits your style. Now, for those of you who might be asking, like, what's the difference to the new 85 from the old one, besides the 1.2 aperture? Well, that's one of the biggest differences. The other 85 mil that they have is a 1.2 opposed to a 1.4. It was really hard to get stuff in focus at 1.2. I'll tell you that. I've had a couple 1.2 lenses and it's a very thin, shallow depth of field, which can sometimes almost get in your way. The other thing with the older 85, it's extremely slow. This lens is so much faster to focus. The other one would hunt and take its time. Sorry, phone. Just search the web for 
what's the difference to the new 85 from the old one aside to the 1.2? That's, that's, why are you talking to me right now? Well, I did not ask you what that was. The other one would take so long to hunt in and out. It would constantly be going in and, and it was just, it was way too slow for the stuff that I needed. If I'm shooting a quick sequence and a car's ripping by and I want to get that car fast, camera's got to be on, boom, record, focus, boom, pan off. I need that clip. I don't have time to be waiting for it to hunt back and forth, back and forth. Hair in my eye stings. So yeah, if you were to give me two choices, like buy this 85 or to have the new one, I would 100% take this because there are so many new benefits that this has that the old one doesn't. So that's it for me, guys. Hit that like button if you like this video. Smash it if that's something that you're into 2018 style. Subscribe if you aren't already. And, and I will see you guys tomorrow.